Let me address the media reports of corruption allegations against senior members of my administration. I'm aware that both the publication and the source document from the United Kingdom have now circulated widely across social media and other platforms. And according to the reports, the British man being investigated by British authorities was here in Malawi two months ago. Then he was arrested and questioned in the UK on his return there. Then he was released on bail without being charged. Then he applied to court for the conditions of his bail to be amended and then was denied the amendments he applied for because the National Crimes Agency argued against the application on the basis of the seriousness of the allegations against him, including the allegation that he had corrupted senior officials in my government, including my vice president, my chief of staff, the solicitor general, the inspector general of Malai Police Service, chairperson of the Public Procurement and Disposal of Assets Authority, PPDA, and a Malawi Police Service lawyer. Admittedly, these are serious allegations. And I know you are anxious and filled with suspicion. And I understand the anguish and anger you all feel from hearing these allegations. I feel the same distress you do from hearing allegations of corruption in the highest offices in the land. And I'm just as frustrated as you are to hear that the British suspect recently visited Malawi and none of these agencies actively investigating him here uh, noticed that, thus missing a golden opportunity to make progress on the matter. But it is not enough for me to feel angry. You elected me to make decisions that make our country better. And I took an oath of office that when making any decision, including in matters of justice, I would do so, quote, according to law, without fear or favor, affection or ill will, end of quote. That means my decisions as president must uphold certain principles of justice regardless of my feelings and my frustrations. It is these principles of justice that make us a civilized society. And so we cannot sacrifice them in the name of anger and anguish. One of these, those principles is that every citizen has a constitutional right to defend themselves against an accuser. And at this point, none of these individuals have been charged by any court where they can answer for themselves. Another principle is that everyone's side of the story must be heard. And at this point, none of these individuals have even been invited for interviews or questioning by investigators to hear their side of the story. And now, a whole week has passed since the allegations against them were reported. Yet our investigators have not even seen the need or urgency to interview them. A third principle of justice is that everyone is presumed innocent until proven guilty of a charge tendered in a credible court of law. And at this point, no court in Malawi has charged these individuals of any crime. It is because I'm required by law to uphold these principles that I have always waited for our own respected investigators or courts to bring charges against someone before taking executive action concerning their positions. Of course, I do respect the credibility of courts in other countries like the United Kingdom and I respect the credibility of media reports here at home, but I cannot compromise our sovereignty by basing my presidential decisions on anything, on anything other than the Constitution. The Constitution binds me.
to base all my decisions on the law as applied by the law enforcement agencies in Malawi and educated by the courts in Malawi. I do agree with y'all who feel that there needs to be speedy action on this matter. So I share your frustration at the slow pace of investigations on this matter on the one hand, and at efforts by some groups to put roadblocks in, invest in those investigations on the other hand. And on top of that, I share your frustration that the cases of corruption from the past that I promised would be dealt with when I am in office seem to have left, uh, been left unattended to by those responsible for disposing of them, allowing those who committed those acts to be walking freely in our society in a state of indefinite impunity. To me, all these things mean one thing, that the Anti-Corruption Bureau needs more of our support. So far, I have allocated the ACB more funding than ever before. I have regularly promoted and enforced a policy of non-interference among my ministers. And when I appointed the Director General, I directed my own office to bear the cost of a more secure home than what was provided for her in her contract. But given the urgent need for executive action on corruption, I believe it is in the public's interest for her office to receive strategic guidance from me as the one she's required by law to report to. For that reason, I'm giving the ACB Director General 21 days to conclude the investigation on this case, the corruption conference that I will host. A nationwide campaign against corruption is necessary because going by the recent findings that many of you feel that corruption is getting worse also needs to be intensified. For that to happen, the campaign must involve all stakeholders including the civil service, civil society organizations, the media, the private sector, the faith community, traditional leaders, and international partners. Most importantly, it needs the involvement of citizens. As such, the National Anti-Corruption Conference will bring together representatives of all the government entities in which corruption happens, as well as other stakeholders across Malawi, to identify the loopholes and gaps that still exist in government and are used for corruption. The conference will also be a platform for having an honest national dialogue about the ways we as a society create an enabling environment for corruption and devise ways of changing it together. Toward this effort, on my recent trip abroad, I secured support for this initiative and other initiatives to come for the purpose of strengthening our governance framework and financial management systems. Going forward, my pledge to all of you is simple. No matter what challenges we face or what challenges they demand, I will always act in your best interest as your servant and act in accordance with the law to the best of my ability, so help me God. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>